Here's uh, a quick example. Uh, participants read about um, a hypothetical study conducted by Johnson and Green that allegedly tested whether the success of American adults was more influenced by their parents' socioeconomic status or by their own hard work and determination. Um, uh, half the participants then read that the study's findings supported a pro-meritocracy conclusion, namely that a person's own hard work and determination had a larger influence that on a person's success than the parental income and social status. Or the other half instead received an anti-meritocracy conclusion that parental income and social status uh, had a larger influence on a person's success than a person's own hard work and determination. Okay, so either supporting or challenging uh, the reality of the American dream. The question is this. Which participants think that the methodology is sound, that a telephone survey produces reliable results, uh, that 843 is a large enough sample uh, size, and so on, and which participants do not? We found that participants judge the same exact study procedure to be more convincing and, more, um, and better conducted uh, when it supported the pro-meritocratic uh, conclusion. And to let you know that this is not merely a case of people rationalizing their own personal prior beliefs, uh, I'll mention just quickly that we also performed an internal analysis uh, analyzing the data only for those people who explicitly disagreed with three meritocratic statements in a pre-testing session that had been held uh, months earlier. And we found the, the same general pattern uh, of results as illustrated here. We also found that the pro-meritocratic bias was exacerbated by system threat. So that under these circumstances, the studies supporting the American dream were seen as even more convincing and well-conducted than before, and the studies casting doubt on the American dream were seen as even less convincing and less well-conducted, uh, presumably because people are trying, uh, unconsciously, I think, to restore legitimacy to the system following threat. Okay, the fourth and final uh, line of research focuses on properties of goal pursuit such as equifinality and multifinality. So according to the property of, uh, of equifinality, uh, satisfying the goal is the important thing. That's the desired end state. And there are multiple functionally interchangeable means of doing so. That is, there should be different ways of satisfying the system justification goal, include, including direct or indirect ways of legitimizing, for example, the economic system or the political system or the system of gender relations in society or in the family. And each of these different routes to system justification presumably is useful for satisfying the system justification goal. All right, here's an example um, taken from an experiment performed in collaboration with Ido uh, Leviathan. Uh, after exposing participants either to a high system threat or a low system threat passage, we gave some participants the opportunity to justify the system on political grounds and other participants the opportunity to justify on economic grounds. Afterward, they completed measures of positive and negative affect, and they were then given the opportunity to justify the system on the other domain. Uh, so we found first that system threat increased both routes to system justification, as you can see here. Uh, in addition, using a path model, we found that adjusting for baseline levels of political orientation and system justification uh, as measured uh, weeks or months before, being assigned to this high system threat condition relative to the low system threat condition led to an increase in whatever type of system justification, economic or political, that they had the opportunity to endorse first. And the degree of system justification on that first measure led to a significant decrease in negative affect and to a slight increase in positive affect, which may indicate yet another property of goal pursuit, uh, namely that there's relief associated with fulfilling a goal. System justification on the first measure also predicted system justification on the second measure, so there was a carryover effect as well. Uh, and furthermore, the leftover or residual negative affect um, following the, the first system justification opportunity significantly predicted the degree of system justification in the second opportunity. So we have some evidence here that um, uh, system justification reduces negative affect and that negative affect motivates further efforts to engage in system justification. 
positive affect does not seem to play as important a role here. According to the property of multi-finality, attaining the system justification goal satisfies multiple needs, which makes it a potentially uh, powerful motivational force. Specifically, we think that system justification satisfies at least three important types of psychological needs, including epistemic needs to reduce uncertainty and create a stable, predictable worldview, existential needs to manage threat and to perceive a safe, reassuring environment, and relational needs to achieve shared reality with important others, including friends and family members, who also have system justification needs of their own. Okay, so we think that it is useful to regard system justification as a goal system, and that this might help to explain uh, the prevalence of uh, system justification insofar as it suggests that there are multiple means of satisfying, uh, in essence, multiple needs. Uh, and that preferred means may depend upon situational factors and individual differences, uh, among other things. And this model, which allows for competing goals such as ego justification uh, and group justification, may also help to explain when people will and will not ultimately engage in system justification. And finally, we know that goals are often pursued non-consciously, uh, and we're now finding a good deal of evidence of implicit or non-conscious motivation to evaluate the system favorably, but uh, I don't have time to um, tell you about that today. Okay, I'll conclude um, by mentioning just a few of the legal implications of system justification theory and research that, Glary, uh, that Gary Blasey and I uh, identified in a recent article in the California Law Review. Um, first, there are some implications for legal advocacy, I think, uh, including jury selection and argument framing. Um, most of the current advice on jury selection seems to emphasize the importance of demographic similarity uh, between juror and defendant. But if the defendant uh, is a member of a disadvantaged group, this could um, sometimes backfire. And I think we started to get into some of these issues in the interesting discussion that followed this morning's uh, panel. Um, we find that between one-third and one-half of Latinos, Asians, and African Americans in the U.S show implicit preferences for whites in various contexts. And so, at a minimum, lawyers uh, should be aware of potential system justifying motives and tendencies and anticipate and incorporate these uh, facts into their argumentation. Um, some, I think, are already doing so, although they may not um, know exactly why their experience suggests to them that it may be working. I was, um, uh, a, a, a year or two ago, I was, um, uh, went through the voir dire process as a potential juror, and one of the um, attorneys uh, began the voir dire process by referring to um, George Washington, the Vietnam War Memorial in Washington, D.C., and 9-11 and the Iraq War, and this was a basically very ordinary case about medical malpractice. So some people are already, already doing it. Um, uh, second, uh, much of tort law assumes that people are self-interested advocates for their own welfare, but we think that this will uh, not always be the case. Many members of disadvantaged groups will develop a depressed sense of entitlement that will lower claiming rates, especially, we think, for system implicating claims, such as discrimination and domestic violence claims. Um, and I think that there is some evidence su uh, suggesting that this is indeed the case. Uh, finally, uh, system justification theory suggests that the legal system, like all other social systems, uh, will be very slow to change. Uh, reliance on precedent, the status quo, means uh, resistance to new and outside ideas, uh, including, I fear, um, those ideas from social psychology, although I agree with everyone uh, here today that um, it's still uh, very important for us to try. Thank you.